are very welcome to today's show because we have got a fantastic panel of guests. They are the cast of BBC's critically lauded audience, adored Peaky Blinders, and we are so excited. Please put your hands together for Paul Anderson, Joe Cole, Kate Phillips, and producer Jamie Glazebrook. I am having a little bit of a fangirl moment right here. I think our audience are just as excited. Are we excited, guys? <laughs> Fantastic, guys. You are very welcome to Build. It is so nice to have you here today. Lots of questions for you. I have questions. If you at home have questions, please be sure to check out our Twitter, um, Bill, AOL Build LDN. That's AOL Build LDN. Leave a question on there. And if you fancy contacting us on um, Facebook, leave your comment down below and we'll do our best to get back to you before the end of the show. But. I am so excited to have you here. I feel like I'm at the uh, the UFC, you know, like with the throw the mic down on the. <laughs> what is that? So after every time I speak, I'm just gonna go. <laughs> well, that will make for a very interesting um, a panel discussion. I've always wanted to do that. That's all. That's okay. Um, so as we know, <laughs> he's at it. As we know, season four kicked off last week on BBC Two, 9 p.m. Uh, what an amazing way to kick off a series! Um, but before we get into it. It has been absolutely nuts, the whole reaction to Peaky Blinders. Um, could you have envisaged that it would be so successful, um, Paul? No way, no. I, I get asked that question a lot um, when I first read the script. I mean, I had no idea what, you know, what it would uh, become. I mean, I didn't even know we'd make a season two. I, um, when I first saw the title, The Peaky Blinders, I thought it was some sort of like Cockney like musical or something, you know, because <laughs> of the word blinder, you know what I mean? And I had no idea, no, and none of us did. I don't think we, we had any expectations or, you know, we just, we just enjoyed doing it and playing it and, you know, discovering these characters and, and uh, it was great how people took to them, you know. Well, you're having a great time making it and obviously taking part. We are having a fantastic time watching it. Um, why do you think audiences have fallen so in love with the show, um, Joe? Um, I, I guess it's bold. It's, it's sort of out there. It's, um, you know, it's, we, we've tried to create real characters. We all have a real bond you know, on set. Myself, Paul, Kate, everyone in the, everyone in the cast, we have a lot of fun. And that sometimes comes across on, on camera that we're kind of... We are really sort of enjoying ourselves. So yeah, I think it's, it's, it's just sort of, um, it, it really pushes the emotions. Absolutely, and the script is absolutely fantastic as well. And of course, the cast. Um, what do you think, Jamie, are the ingredients to make such an, an amazing show? I think, I think they're all the things that we can see. So the amazing cast, the um, costumes, the um, music, obviously we all like, but I reckon, it's, it's the fact that when you watch Peaky Blinders, you really are, one moment you're laughing, and the next moment you're upset, and the next moment you're on the edge of your seat. It gives you such an emotional experience because, because of the writing and what these people do, you really feel for the characters so much. You, don't, you might not like them, but you really feel for them, and, you're, and it's a feely experience, and I think that is why you know, Snoop Dogg likes it as much as, you know. Name drop. Yeah, Dr. <laughs> well, well, there are a lot of celebrity fans out there, everyone from Brad Pitt to Steven Spielberg. And um, as, as I said, the highly anticipated series um, 4 started again last week on BBC Two, and we do have a clip, so let's take a look. And uh, what do you get up to all day, Arthur? As you know, Arthur's previous endeavours have left us with no need for a salary. Arthur occupies his time in the garden, doing voluntary work. He drives old people and cripples. Yeah, well, something to do. But what an open a garage. Someday. Fixing cars, you know. Sometimes cars attract ambitious men. Yeah, but I like fixing cars. Mm. Oh God! I oh, got it. <laughs> Maple, two, four, five. Arthur, you checked your post. I just got served a black hand. I just got delivered a black fucking hand to the house. From Luca Chancoletta. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Wait a minute, John, which one was Luca? The old man 
turns out his son. He was going to get done for killing a bank clerk in a robbery. So his old man sent him back to New York. You know what the black hand means among the wops, Arthur? It's mafia shit. The Sicilian fucking mafia. Just check your post, Arthur. Arthur, I was just leaving. No, you're not. I need, I need to talk to you. Arthur? It's all right, Linda. Stay here. I need a police. Linda, you stay here. Ooh, drama, drama, drama. The drama just never ends. And I saw you two having a giggle there. Do you like watching back scenes? Does it bring back memories from filming? <laughs> Paul, Kate? Um, some memories, yeah. I, every time we, uh, we shot that bit of me answering the phone, I just kept saying different numbers, you know. <laughs> what is it, Maple 425? I just kept going like, Maple 129441. <laughs> like, and it just to make Kate laugh. And Love it. Still makes her laugh, even though I got it right, you know, in the end. Kate, I have to ask, did you finally, or did Linda finally get to tame Arthur? Because he's talking about driving old people around, which is not very like Arthur before, is it? No, it doesn't seem very much like him. Um, I, think, I think the thing about Linda is from the off, she's tried to reform him and uh, you know, take him away from this criminal life. And uh, you know, we all know that at the end of season three that she doesn't succeed, but it seems now that she's, you know, she's gone so far as to sort of save him and keep him safe, but um, things have to change. And, uh, and um, you know, she's now, along with Arthur, going to have to work out how they wrestle with being, you know, she's a Shelby, she can't fight that now, she's mm -hmm. tied to them by blood, and... Um, yeah, I guess these kind of like lots of her convictions will be tested this season as to, you know, can she keep him safe and what like, you know, what what she'll have to do to kind of do that. How exciting. And because I know when your character was introduced, maybe people were a little bit worried whether she would take away from Arthur and maybe lead him to, to a side that we aren't used to seeing him and perhaps make him a little bit less interesting. But if anything, I think she's made him even more interesting. Arthur. Yeah, I know. I mean, actually, it feels to me like the struggle that he's had to go through, um, uh, you know, that's been highlighted via Linda trying to, you know, rescue him and keep him safe. Um, and, um, and, you know, this, you know, I totally understand why people might not warm to her initially, because um, she's taking him away from the family and anyone who likes Peaky Blinders loves the Shelby. So, um, but, you know, in her defence, she's doing everything she can to to rescue her family. Yeah, by the way, like, Arthur would be completely, you know, lost without Linda, I think. And he would certainly, you know, be in a terrible situation. I think Linda, you know, like, I think a good girlfriend, wife, woman in, in a, you know, in, in, in a man's life and equally, you know, good man in a woman, they ground each other and, and you know, and, and, and there's something that Stephen Knight wrote that I loved, I always remember reading was, um, whatever Arthur does, he he, do, he does it. Whatever Linda tells him to do, he, he does it with no, you know, animosity or resentment. You know, he he just he, if Linda says don't smoke near the baby, you know he's cool. He'll put the cigar out. You know what I mean? If she says go and get the go and get the eggs, you know what I mean? He'll get the eggs. If she wants him to drive old people around, he might. You know, he'll look at that and think, do I want to drive old people? But you know, Linda. <laughs> It's like, why not? You know what I mean? Like, so I'm going off my head. If I don't, I'm going to go mad. If not, so it's kind of, you know, it grounds him a lot, you know? Absolutely. They kind of need each other, don't they? Um, so season one, ha season four, the first episode, has oh, he slammed the mic, has kicked off um, with a bang. It was indeed very, very dramatic. Um, uh, for anyone who hasn't seen it, go have a look. It is absolutely amazing. How was that episode for you, Joe? <laughs> Painful. <laughs> Tell us more. Um, I mean, it was it was it was sad to watch in a way because uh, you know you just hope it all works out, I guess. Um, and uh, it brought back a lot of. It actually made me uh, brought back a lot of memories of working on the show for the last few years. 
started it in 2012 mm -hmm. and made some great friends and it kind of just made me think of the, that whole that whole sort of arc and I guess it's about now whether I come through it or not and, 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 and sort of figuring that out without giving anything away. Oh. Um, yeah. Well, I can't wait to see episode two. It airs tonight. And I really, I'm just, I'm dying to find out what happens um, and where the story goes next because I've often heard you guys say it, but you just never know where Stephen's going to take um, the drama and where it's going to go in the next episode and indeed in the next season. And we did have a, a Twitter comment from Dory Harrison who says, um, I cannot deal with last week's ending. Seriously, what's going to happen tonight? How can this show not win best drama with an opening um, episode like that? All cast are absolute tribute to the original show. Shelby family. Um, it must make you feel good to, to hear um, audiences reacting in such a way. Uh, Jamie. Uh, it's been amazing and watching just on Twitter the response to last episode um, was incredible and I really love you know in an age where uh, TV comes quite easy you can binge a whole series the fact that everyone's had to wait seven days to find out what happens is brilliant <laughs> and I can't wait I really cannot wait for people to see this series because it's very very exciting. It does bring back the excitement of telly again because it's, totally. it's easy to kind of binge on an entire series, but there is something exciting about gathering around the telly in the living room and actually watching something as it mm. goes out and really not knowing what can happen and having to wait an entire week. Yeah, I, was, I was out this, this weekend and like, I was out Friday and Saturday and honestly, like, the amount of people coming up to me going, what happens, what happens to John? <laughs> and then literally they'd turn around to someone else and go, did he tell you? <laughs> Did he tell you? He didn't tell me. You know. <clears throat> and it's so true. You don't get that anymore. You, you really don't. Nobody's at the same stage of a TV show. Whereas with this right now, everybody is at the same stage, which is quite exciting and quite... I've told everyone. <laughs> I've told I was everyone. Say, are you, are you, you you've got no friends, Paul. So it's oh, right. I've told. It's true. I've, I've told my two friends. Aww. You know what I mean? Because they really wanted to know about you know what happens to Joe. I, no, I don't hold back. If you, if, you, if you ask me the question, I'll, I'll answer it, no problem. Well, yeah, the audience are saying, tell us, tell us, what happens? Fill us in, dot, 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 fill in Mike the dot, drop. dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, he thought it out, he thought it out. But how, how do you stop yourself from telling people what happens next when you are so excited yourself about the series? I found a nice bucket in the corner of the uh, pub with loads of cigarettes and I just put my head in it and went like that. Uh, no, you just, you just got to keep your mouth shut and you don't get too drunk and leave early. But also, you, you, you also sort of know the joy of what it's like when you watch a show yourself mm. and, uh, and when, you know, you've had spoilers, it's ruined for you and the sort of special surprise and the sort of the, you know, the intensity of the moment when you watch it is lost. And I've had the opportunity, unlike these guys, to actually be a fan of the show before I was on it. Oh. And so I still, when I watch it, I still feel like, I do still feel a bit like, I feel like, oh my God, I'm all Peaky Blinders. And when we had the screening, we were just sat there with our feet up with a box of popcorn. And uh, it really just, it still feels like that. So, you know, you sort of totally understand what that feeling is, even when you're in it. It is very sweet. And that feeling that you described just there is complete contrast to some of the tension that you are feeling when you are filming a, a certain scene. Um, and we'll go back to that first episode of the new series, because it's the first one that we can actually properly talk about. Um, and how, how did you feel in the midst of all that drama? Because you are very much at the center of it. And of course, you um, as well, Paul, as his, as his brother. Uh, it's, you know, like I said before, it's, it, is, it is thrilling. And, and, I, and I guess I only really kind of understood the, the sort of scale of it when I watched it back. And then when I subsequently went out onto, you know, the streets of London. Um, but it is thrilling. And it's kind of, you know, at all sides of, all sides of what's going on. There, there's, there's crazy things happening all, all over the shop. And that's testament to Steve continually trying to... Uh, push the boat out and, 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 and really kind of make it more and more dramatic, but also ke keeping it uh, in a sense of realism at the same time. And how was the mood on set on the day when you were filming? Um, well, somber, I guess. <laughs> no, it was quite the opposite. I think okay. everyone was quite happy. <laughs> you know, everyone was like, oh, yeah, we get to shoot Joe. <laughs> we get to shoot Joe. <laughs> My Finn, Finn was loving it, my brother. It was like, ah, you know. So, so yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, it was fun. It was a fun day, and it, 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 because you know we're getting to play with squibs, and we've got loads of guns out, and mm -hmm. we've got, uh, uh, you know, everyone gets to kind of um, 
do what we, the reason why we signed up to this bloody show. Just have a lot of fun so, on set. Yeah, and yeah. I think it's great that one of the lead characters, you know, gets shot. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, and, you know, we always used to talk about it. Joe and I, like, would always discuss what, you know, which one of us was going to, you know, die or get shot or get, you know, because we always thought that Stephen's going to kill, you know, someone someday, you know, and he never did, you know what I mean? And, uh, and he always said he never wanted to, you know, so it's like, so, so you know. like, just to follow on from that, Paul, mm. is like the other thing Steve's always said to play sort of, I guess, devil's advocate with it is he, you know, he, 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 he doesn't want to almost make it easy on himself by, by killing somebody, mm. you know, so like, you know, he's, he's sweating here, he's sweating. <laughs> Jamie, he's sweating Jamie's here. like, please don't say You know, he, he sort of said, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's, e it's an easy writing. It's, e it's easy writing, it, you know, he didn't always want to do that. So it's, it's, it's yeah. And, and I love the way in the first episode where you see, he really created a problem for himself by putting everyone in prison and, and, you know, he got them out of that. But then finding them living their separate lives, I th that was a real problem, this is what, the, Arthur in the in the in the second series said, "I want to go out and breed chickens," <laughs> you know, and to see their dreams be realised, and then to see that it isn't actually everything they wanted was fascinating. And I I, I think it's such a rich episode that first episode for that reason, but it's going to be fantastic to see what happens next. Obviously, I wonder how many people be tuning in if Arthur was breeding chickens for the next two seasons. And all of them, all of them. <laughs> a lot, mate, a lot. Because when I breed chickens. <laughs> You know what I mean? I ain't like anyone else breeding chickens. A lot of people have said they want, after the events of last week, they are keen to see what Arthur does next. Yes, what will Arthur do next? Well, you know, when I first read that, right, when I read the script and J John, I mean, I, it, it really up, it upset me, you know, because I've me and Joe are, are friends, you know, off camera and, you know, believe it or not. <laughs> and um, yeah. we, and I, you know, and I was, I was, I was touched, mate, by it. I was really up, you know, I was upset by it. And then watching it last week as well, I mean, I ain't gonna, I, I ain't gonna lie, I sort of, you know, I had a little tear in my eye. I did, mate, because it's like, you know, there's, there's a connection between John and Arthur that we always tried to build on. We did with, you know, with Killian also, uh, as brothers, whenever we had scenes, whenever Stephen wrote those important scenes that, you know, uh, those family scenes, with, especially with the brothers, with the three of us, and he didn't write, the, he hasn't written that many, really, to be honest, but the ones that there are there, are, you know, we really cherished and really enjoy playing those scenes, and so um, I'm, you know, there's a, there was, there's a bond between all three of us, obviously, but John and Arthur are very much, you know, we're very much the foot soldiers, um, and we would do a lot of Tommy's dirty work together, so, you know, there's Joe and I, and then there's John and Arthur, and we, we, we've experienced a lot together, you know, in the, in the five years. And so when I read it in the script, I was very, I was very upset. You old softy, you. Yeah, oh, I'm telling you. I read somewhere that when you are having a fight scene, you generally like to actually get a, a punch thrown or two. Is that, is that true? I mean, you know, you can't help anyway but get hit in a fight scene, and and to make it look authentic and real, yeah, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have to sort of walk away with a bruise or a, you know, a sore art. You know, you're gonna you're gonna hurt yourself, and uh, and sure, it looks much better if you. Uh, Absolutely, and some genuine bruises as well. I have to ask about this um, new season uh, up ahead. Can you give us any any sort of nugget of information about what might be happening and what we can expect, uh, Jamie? I know that Adrian Brody is on board. Um, is is Tom Hardy back? <coughs> is he back um, again? I think I can say, yeah, we are going to see Tom Hardy. Um, uh, obviously, Adrian, tonight you'll see some Adrian Brody and also Aidan Gillen mm -hmm. and the amazing Jack Rowan as well. Um, there's some brilliant, I don't know, I just don't want to give away anything, but it's pretty clear where we're going. They know, Tommy said, we've all got to go back to Small Heath, and there's going to be, you're, you're, you're kind of going into almost what's like a kind of war genre. They're under attack, and, and they've got a big problem. And the question is, not only how they're going to get out of it, but can they even stick together, because they've fallen out so badly. It's so funny, you don't want to give away anything and I want to know everything, so this is, <laughs> this is a funny old interview. Um, what do you think is attracting such A-list stars to, to Peaky Blinders? Well, it's, uh, Stephen Knight's scripts are astonishing and you read them and every single line is 
beautiful. I can just see why any actor would want to you know, get in with that, really. Mm -hmm. I think it's the scripts, but also the world is so inviting. And you know that when you step in, Stephen said very early on, I want it to be almost like this is a world that you're seeing from the point of view of a 10 year old. So all the men and women are handsome and the horses are beautiful and the cars are shiny. And so to step into that world where it's kind of heightened, has, I mean, you tell me, but I imagine it, it looks fun from our point of view. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's so exciting and so, so fun to do. I remember the first day, the first couple of days that we, we came on set and it's the, the sets are incredible and they've got horses walking around and they've got 100 extras and, and it's, you know, there's not so much acting required when you've got a, a world like that. I mean, I don't know what you guys think, but it is, it, you know, they really do sort of lay it out for you and you, mm -hmm. you see that in the show. I mean, there's that iconic scene of uh, Killian walking through the factory with flames, mm -hmm. sort of trying to attack him. And uh, I mean, that's just, I mean, when you sort of step on set and you get to sort of see that happening for, for real, it's very fun. I can imagine, and Jamie mentioned some handsome men, and of course we have handsome men with handsome haircuts. And I heard that you, you men in particular, weren't too pleased uh, when you saw what you might have to actually... You can't get any other jobs. Oh. <laughs> so they look at you and go, oh, we can cast you as a pineapple or an onion. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I just think it's so funny that the drama offset has revolved around men and their hair and them not wanting to shave it off. I heard that it took you a good week, Paul, to get your head around the fact that you had to go for that. Where did you hear that? Uh, maybe you said it somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> so I told her. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, I, uh, listen, I, it's no, it's no uh, secret. I mean, the haircut is it's a hard thing to wear, you know, like, especially Arthur's, it's so severe. Cause, and I think, like, I look at, like, Joe and then I look at Killian and I, and I think, oh, theirs ain't as bad as mine. <laughs> You know, but then they probably look at me and think, oh, yours is all right. Like, well, I remember one day you were like, no, I like your hair. I hate my hair. And I'm like, no, my, mine's, um, mine's severe. Mine's full on. And it's just, it's fine when you're in a, you know, when you're in a three-piece suit and you're walking about with the hundred extras and all the horses. <laughs> as Joe said, no, that's great. You know what I mean? When you're on set of Peaky Blinders and, 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 and when I'm, you know, when you're, when I'm Arthur, it's fine. But, you know, you take the gear off and you know what I mean, you, you're, you're walking about South London with that haircut, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, and the council estate that I'm from. No, but you know, it, it, it's just, you know, it's a, hard, it's a hard thing to wear, you know what I mean? Just in the real world is a, is a hard haircut to wear. And then everyone just thinks you're, if that, you know, if when we first started, obviously no one knew who I was, you know what I mean? Like, so people just thought it was some sort of fashion statement I was making. And I actually went to a, couple of parties it was london fashion week when i first got that haircut and i remember i went in this party and it was the worst thing because i ate all that right and this this like you know fashion sort of trendy geezer come up to me and and he and he was like man i dig your hair man like you know <laughs> he's your barber and all that and i was like just like it was the worst comment he could have made because yeah my you know i was seen as it was seen as like a fashion statement when when I just, you know, I just wanted to wear a beanie or a lot. I think you're rocking it. You know what, though? It's, it's actually genius of Loz, the designer, to, she essentially, so she did her, did her research, but she kind of invented this haircut at the same time. She sort of was like, I want all the men to have this. And it's now become, like, iconic for the, for the series. And everyone's like, everyone wants hair like you, Paul. Yeah, so I, you I, remember, I remember just quickly, like, I've got to just tell you this story because it's God's <laughs> honest truth. I was first season, right? We'd, we'd, we'd been filming the first couple of weeks, me and Paul, and I get the train home, and I'm on the underground coming back, going back home. It's like half empty carriage. And there's these two guys who obviously work in the city in suits, two, two sort of 30 year old blokes. And one of them's sort of cry, crying. He's obviously, I don't know what's happened to him, but he's obviously, he's crying. There's other mates consoling. And it's absolutely true. And I'm sitting there, I've got my headphones in, but I've got no music playing. And I can see him talking, and they're like, he goes, come on, mate, it's all right, mate. He goes, all right, mate. He looks up at me, he sees me, he goes, mate. <laughs> At least you ain't got that haircut. Oh. Genuine. And I just went... Burn. I, I, I wanted to go, excuse me, I'm doing a TV show for the BBC, <laughs> but I thought, you know what, I'm just going to suffer it. Yeah, that's dead, dead truth, man. Well, I don't know, Brooklyn Beckham, uh, Liam Payne, they're all kind of rocking similar do's and the Baker Boy cap. Oh, no, listen, don't, don't get me wrong. Like, don't get us wrong. When we look back and we see it on screen, I mean, it, it, it looks great, you know what I mean? And it just works. It fits, it fits with the world and it looks great. But, you know... You try and have the you try and sport that haircut. I don't, I don't think the likes of me and Kate could quite pull it off. I don't know. As well as you guys. I don't know. 
but you do have you do get to wear your own kind of period costumes and they're beautiful but um am i right to believe they're just as uncomfortable as the stereotypical corsetti dresses you, uh, they're not actually they're actually sort of lovely um we get away with uh, the fact that we don't have to wear any corsets. I've been on shows where I've had to wear corsets the whole time, um, but but not for us in the twenties. Although the the nineteen twenties cut just sits on just below your waistline, which is not a flattering cut for me, <laughs> unfortunately. But um, actually, what's kind of exciting, I think, in terms of the the, w the ladies' fashion, is that during the twenties, for women anyway, fashion was like really essential part for sort of expressing your identity and who you were, because you didn't really have much of a platform. Um, to, to sort of speak out, uh, you know, and the clothes are really helpful for that. So what's great about this season as well that I think sort of Linda's journey is also mapped by the clothes she wears as well. Mm -hmm. And she looks beautiful in all of them, I think. Um, so we've spoken about the fashion, obviously the scripting. I want to talk about the music, Jamie, because that plays a huge uh, role in this series. And I think that's another reason why fans love it so much. Um, how much thought goes into the soundtrack and choosing, so much thought. <laughs> who, choosing who will be on it? So It's so much thought. And what's been really fun is every series, it's been a very different approach to the music. So it was led by the director of the first episodes, Otto Bathurst, um, said, I want to put in Nick Cave, Red Right Hand. And, um, and then the Jack White. And sort of from that, everything is um, blossomed. So the first was very Nick Cave, Jack White. And the second series, we um, had a, a, a kind of um, uh, worked in partnership with PJ Harvey. So there was, a, and that felt very different. And then the third series, we felt, really when we choose it, it's what's going on in their characters' heads. That's what it's all about. So it's not at what, what will they look cool walking to. It's really what in their, what's in their head. So Radiohead felt so right for last time. And then this series, it's very, very action, visceral. Um, and we've got some amazing tracks. We've got a cover of Red Right Hand by Iggy Pop and Jarvis Cocker. Mm -hmm. Laura Marling's doing a cover of Red Right Hand. So there's some fantastic musicians want to get involved and have got involved. Um, and uh, I think it's a very kind of, it's, it's, it's more in your face soundtrack this series, just to go hand in hand with what you're going to see. Yeah, well, every part and every aspect of the show is absolutely gorgeous. And I heard that we are actually, or you, are going to be doing another season. Season five has been commissioned. Has Stephen said anything about what may or may not happen in the next series? He has, but I couldn't possibly tell you. <laughs> Thought I'd try. He's got, but he's like a showman. He's, he, he, he gets us excited. He's, so he'll say a sentence and we'll go, oh my God, that's <laughs> going to be amazing. And then he'll just like not tell you anything. So it, it, and then suddenly a script will come through and it'll all be fleshed out. So we get, we are as excited as anyone else. Um, I've got some comments here from Facebook. Kathy McCoy Morgan says, a fabulous show. Uh, we're so excited for season four. Um, Cheryl Miller um, Kolarik. Apologies if I said that wrong, says, love, love, love the Peaky Blinders. And uh, Maria Shah says, love the show. You are all brilliant. Um, I have to ask, what's next for you guys now that season four has uh, been shot and you have a little bit of downtime? Uh, what projects are you working on, Paul? Uh, no, I'm not doing anything right now. I'm just hanging out. I love it. It's Christmas. It's the best Growing time. your hair out. It's the best time of year. I'm growing my hair and my beard and... Um, it's just great, yeah. <laughs> Where can we see you next, Kate? Um, well, there was a there was a film I shot back in January uh, called The Aftermath. It's a film uh, just set uh, in uh, in Germany after the Second World War with uh, and I'm sort of do it with Keira Knightley. So that will be out in the, the new year. Very exciting and love it. We're so humble, aren't we? I'm, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. By the way, I'm going to blab in for about five minutes. But almost. No, it's like if we were in America right now, we'd all be like, I'm doing this, man, I'm doing this. Okay, so I've just this little film, little film. Um, no, I've got a Thai boxing prison movie called A Prayer Before Dawn, which comes out next year. It's pretty mad. Um, and uh, Black Mirror did an episode of that, which comes out, uh, I, thought, I don't know when it comes out, but I think it's this year. So that's, uh, that's a fun one as well. I'm um, looking forward to people seeing that, yeah. I heard you were in some intense training, actually, for that movie. Um, you went to Thailand. Yeah. Did you actually did train professionally to be a Thai boxer? Yeah, Th Thai, Thai. <laughs> Whatever way you want to say it, I guess. Um, yeah, I was training to be a Thai boxer. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm messing. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was, yeah, it was intense, and it was kind of we were training with all ex, um, you know, prisoner boxers, guys who've, you know, uh, kill people and this sort of stuff, and then one Thai, uh, one one prison tournaments to have early release. So everybody in the film is have spent a lot of time in prison, and they're all um, 
very interesting, complicated characters, um, and all the fighting in the film is kind of, is, all the sparring's real, and a lot of the fighting is every punch connects because of the way Jean Stefan, the director, um, wanted to shoot. So, yeah, it was it was it was good. I got I got fit. Well, we look. Oh, I got fit. I think you were fit anyway. But um, it it we look for. <laughs> Did I just? It. Yeah, I said that out loud. <laughs> um, we look forward to seeing you on screen as we do uh, seeing all of your projects. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're looking forward to seeing the rest of Thanks. series Thank you. four Thank and you. what else is to come. Thank you for being excellent. Thank you to the audience and make sure to tune in to Peaky Blinders on BBC Two, 9 p.m. tonight for season. Yeah. 9 p.m. tonight for episode two and next Wednesday as well for three and so on and so on and so on. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.